Judd. Number five, you put Jurassic World. What do you have for number six? Uh, Inside Out. Inside uh, Out. That's a fair guess. I don't think it's going like I. I don't know. Maybe it's the child in me, so I can like gauge appeal. But I do think Minions has a higher appeal than Inside Out, and it's not a sequel, so it's automatically doomed for less money. Although Pixar is pretty much making all of their movies sequels. Like, it's a Pixar movie. It's kind of follows under the same sequel. Like the reason people watch yeah. sequels. There are fan theories that all Pixar movies take place in one universe. So here you go. And some are just drawn worse than others. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And Alex, number I, six. I picked Ted two. Okay. There's a comedy every year that breaks into the top ten. And the first Ted did very well. Yes. Also was good. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of good. Like a Family Guy episode. Wrong. Ha- have com. you seen the synopsis for Ted two or seen a trailer? Uh, I have seen a trailer. It's a, awkward. A year or two ago. Just, the, the, way, the, the way the synopsis is written is rather awkward. It's like a woman falls in love with Ted and marries him, and yeah. they have some kind of They want to have a thing. baby. I don't yeah, They want to have weird, a baby, man. but he has to prove his personhood or something. Yeah. I, I'm guessing that's a social commentary on... It's going to be loaded with abortion jokes. Yeah. Well, okay. We, I also have Ted, too, at number two. And number two? So, or number six. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you know? I have something in common. Yeah. There you Whatever go. we matched up Besides, on something else. Yeah. Avengers. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Okay. Well, Ted Two, I agree with you there. Judd, how are you at number seven? Uh I have Mission Mission Impossible Five at number seven. Mm-hmm. Uh just because it doesn't seem like it's getting the buzz that the last one was getting. Yeah, I I actually discovered that there was one coming out in making this list. Yeah, exactly. I That's mean, how I heard about it. As, yeah. Me too. So when yeah. I got to that month. Number seven, I have a good sequel. I haven't seen the original to this yet, but I hear it's very good. Uh, Magic Mike X L. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That is that I I am I do imagine that movie's gonna kill this year. This one doesn't have Matthew McConaughey in it though, so that's you know minus twenty um, sexy points. Mm. That's true. Although you can now tell he's in his fifties. Yeah. Although if I'm that shredded in my fifties, I'll feel okay about it. Yeah. Um. Why did you? What chose? Like what drove you to put? Magic Mike in the top 10. Like, I'm interested in... Well, the first one hit top 10. That'll do it, yeah. Right? And it doesn't fall into a category with any of these other movies, right? It's its own thing. No. It appeals to an audience entirely different, and I don't think anybody is... I don't think any of these other movies give it competition for its audience. True. Uh, And it's riding Fifty Shades of Grey's coattails in that, hey, here's mainstream sexy entertainment geared solely at women. Yeah, the ladies can get but together. But the first and go one was it. a good movie, from what I've heard. To from it to me, it sounds like a burlesque or any other dance movie where it sounds like they're gonna lose the strip club, so they gotta win a dance off. Mm-hmm. Is that what it was about? I don't know. I no, don't. Um, I, I haven't said it was. Yeah, I, I, like channel or my wife watched it and said there's some heavy tones, like some darker tones throughout. Mm. Like, huh. not like they're gonna lose the strip club, but you know. Yeah, uh, yeah I think they deal with uh, HIV. And other stuff too. Yeah, there's some dudes swinging their swinging their junk around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I'm the only one that has Magic Mike on the list, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm at risk of betraying. Yeah. Other stuff. Bye. Number seven, Alex. I chose Terminator Genesis, which okay. is super risky. That is pretty risky. Our our movie going crowd, the last Terminator they saw, and what may have been their introduction to the Terminator franchise was the PG thirteen family adventure Terminator Salvation. Yeah, and I think that puts that at risk. But I I haven't seen the rating on this yet. I think an R rating could help boost it in my eyes without necessarily damaging the box office. But I do think that Terminator has one of the and this is bad. These are not reasons to be successful, but these are reasons I had to put it on my list. Is that it's one of the more awesomely fleshed out, consistent sci-fi worlds that we get. That isn't some. It doesn't require planetary travel or anything. It's just okay. It's just time traveling machines. Mm-hmm. You know, it's our fault we're killing ourselves. I don't know. I've, well, and I, Arnold's back. I always like the Terminator series. He was in Salvation. Uh no, he was not. I looked that up. The guy who there's yeah, that was not a, actually Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, I mean the the CGI Arnold. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Saint um, Arnold, yeah, is in this. Oh, movie. I got you. Um, I do like Terminator series because it has a bunch of sequels and it deals with time travel. And fr- from all I've seen, it has not messed up its own time travel theory. Like, right? Like sometimes, like, like 
in a phase of one movie, they'll contradict themselves. But like the whole series has been very true to the form. This one scares me because of the premise. It might mess up how I've, well they've done. Yeah. With it. I've already forgotten everything I learned about the movie from the trailer. So I don't really want to hear too much more. No, yeah. I, I wouldn't be excited about Terminator. I wish I could forget yeah. what I saw from the trailer because, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, yeah, I can see it there. I think it's going to do well. And, uh, number, number seven, Judd. Mission Impossible 5. Oh, we already got, we already, I already asked you that yeah. question. Okay. Well, there you go. I have no idea what I'm doing. What was your number seven? Magic Mike. Oh, Magic yeah. Mike. Dirt. Man. Yeah. Wow. Head in the game. Well, because we're seeing the list the that's same. That's where I'm going to beat you guys. Yeah. Magic Maybe. Mike. Yeah, that's, that will. All right. <laughs> it's going to. The top of my list was a little too packed, so I had to cram Ant-Man down at number eight. Okay. I do not think it's going to have that instant Marvel attraction. I think it's going to, I'm thinking, I, th- I think it's going to do well, but it's not going to be like Iron Man. Hmm. Well. Yeah. Also, I think that Ant Man, just from the title, I think kind of is not so appealing. Yeah, it really did. That's my sound, personal opinion. It really did sound stupid to me until I heard it framed as "Honey, I Shrunk the Kids" in 2015, <laughs> and then I saw it. Oh yeah. wow, this is gonna be yeah. great. Oh, I, I hope it is great. And I, Paul Rudd's great. Yeah, Paul Rudd's all right. I I don't know what it is about. Is He's he wonderful. is he really leading man though? That's a very good question. Um. Can he draw the crowd, or is is he like another Benedict Cumberbatch? That that is a very excellent question. We'll find out. Although yeah. I don't know that Ant Man is the vehicle to find out whether or not Paul Rudd's leading man material. Hmm. So I think the thing with Paul Rudd, where he remains untested as a leading man, would really just be that I suppose in all the big roles he's done, he's always been opposite a leading lady who balanced out his character. So I suppose the real test we'll see is if he doesn't play a role with a strong romantic interest to keep him backed up to the thing that'll be the challenge we see out of him he's typically the straight man in comedies like he's the like, i understand uh, yeah that's true yeah like uh so like there'll be the funny guy that's kind of crazy and then he's the one giving the expressions the like are yeah. you serious like where he's, he's like yeah totes my goats <laughs> yeah and i love you man <laughs> so um i that's the the thing like he's not the comedic lead He's the straight man, and I don't know how many times the straight man... I mean, like the and stra- I guess he's the buddy. And maybe yeah. that's what makes him so likable, is he's always a buddy. Yeah. I'm not saying he can't do it. I think he'll be able to make the transition, but it's interesting that they've rested one of the Marvel names on that yeah. transition, rather than... Shows like, a lot of faith. Yeah. He... I know my wife got excited. She's like, Paul Rudd? Yeah, I'll go see it. Hmm. But I think go. that might just be the genre of movies he normally appears in. Yeah, so like she won't be... He's largely a romantic <laughs> comedy character. And take him out of that, and it might completely fall to pieces. I really don't see that, though. He's a talented mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, I think he'll, he'll be fine. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be romantic comedy elements in this because there's a reason they casted him. But mm-hmm. other than that, yeah. <clears throat> Are we picking up radio transmissions? How cool is that? It's gone. Oh, wow. I love <laughs> it so much. Yeah. All right, Alex, number eight. Number eight. I probably made a really bad choice with this. Uh, I chose Hot Pursuit. It's a dual female lead buddy cop comedy starring, I think, well, Melissa McCarthy, I believe. And I thought, I don't even remember who's in it. No, Melissa McCarthy is not in it. No. Oh, she's in Spy. That's right. Those yeah. those were actually my toss-ups for the comedy that would break into the top 10 this year. Right? Not Ted. Or you had Ted. I, I do have Ted. Okay. You're right. It, um, I think it- Can that not stand alone as the comedy? I think that women are- Finally being recognized for their purchasing power right. and their standalone quality as a target audience for movie. Mm-hmm. And I think that... Like Magic Mike? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, if I were to take Hot Pursuit out, Magic Mike is what would replace it. Okay. All right. Well... That sentence fell off. Yeah. Yeah. Judd. I have a Terminator at eight. And um, one thing we didn't mention before is that Khaleesi from Game of Thrones is the... Connor girl and Sarah this, Connor. It's Sarah Connor. Okay. And I think that will give some appeal. The Connor girl. Yeah. You're, you don't like Terminator. No, I like well, it. to be to be fair, <laughs> there is only one Connor girl. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. The oh I see like the Connor girl. So you're saying like you said it like the Ohio State University. Right. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Right. Now it makes sense. No, I, I think that'll add some you know, a little bump. I don't I have it at eight. It's not R, is it? I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's I good. Don't think so. Good, good. Yeah. I hope it is. Though. Good. For, for, 
I didn't make that mistake. Yeah. Well, I mean, R-rated movies. Actually, only one R-rated movie made it in the last five years. So, yeah. which one was that again? That was The Hangover Two. Oh. Terminator does have the sequelness to it, although the series got really trashed. Yeah. Yeah. I have faith in Mad Max. Not number three faith, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You'll get three points. Thanks. I really hope Mad Max is great. Yeah. I'm no, sorry. That's yeah. not what we were talking about yeah. now. But I really hope Mad Max yeah, me is too. great. It's gonna be. I'm I'm gonna just gonna count all my chickens right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly with Mad Max. Uh number nine. I have put inside out. Okay. Which is probably too low, but you know, circumstances being no, as I they can, are, yeah. uh, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in top 10 grossing films of the summer is not too low. Yeah, I don't think, I think there is some caution to give to it, um, to the, like, because it's, the, it's, the adventure doesn't seem like it's going to be too adventurous. It's kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, though, I'm not sure it really matters. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, are, are people not going to go see it because of bad reviews? But they didn't, Some of them won't. Yeah. They don't. Th- like um, Frozen had a snowman. It had a little semi-anthropomorphic character that could be a merchandising al- item. Mm-hmm. And then apparently it turned out to be just an awesome movie. Yeah. But uh, this one, I don't see that initial iconic, like the mascot. It doesn't have Mario or Sonic. They do have that uh, unicorn that they will sell where she's like, right. you're in unicorn, blah, blah, blah. That will be something selling. Yeah. But I, how terrible is it when an accessory in the show is a toy that outsells the oh yeah, characters? The main the characters. Show. Although Boba Fett is the highest selling Star Wars action figure, right? Know. And he yeah. has two minutes of screen time. Mm-hmm. I so. think that all of those can be sold, personally. I think I, mean, I think you will be seeing them sold. Oh, sure. Yeah. My, I, won't, I won't see we won't see them on grown ups t shirts. Nah, no. we will. Grandpa's will wear the angry t shirt <laughs> or something. My yeah. nephew's favorite Star Wars character is Emperor Palpatine. And I just okay. respect the heck out of him for it. Because, you know, like... You're like, ah, for like, the character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, go for it, you know? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like find something mainstream and like that one thing that no one else likes. Good for you. And he's young, so he's not trying to be hipster. He just... Yeah. That's, that's his favorite. He just is hipster. And yeah. He doesn't even know what that means. <laughs> exactly. <yet. laughs> uh, Alex, number nine. Ant-Man fell this low for me. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I want to see it. Which surprises me, but I just if the uh, the other Marvel that could be successful in my opinion is Fantastic Four, nine is also successful. The thing with Fantastic Four though is it's not part of the Disney Marvel, so it's not going to people aren't going to get more information. It's not related at all, and I think that kills some of its sequel value. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not saying it's like completely like people are still going to watch it because it's Marvel. But I'm just saying that there's a it gives it a little bit less value than others. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Judd, take us home. Number nine. Uh, Ted two. Um, I think it's my, you know, it's a comedy. I got it low. I don't see it making as much money as the second one or the first one did. First one had a lot of hype for a long time. Mm-hmm. This one, I don't. I you think, haven't been seeing the hype so much. No. So I think it's going to be, it's going to, like, I'm actually, it was either, it was one, like, my bottom five are all, like, where I was either going to put them into my top ten list or in the Dark Horse list. Mm-hmm. And it was probably the top of my dark horse list. So, mm. yeah, it's not. I don't have too much faith. Okay. So this is that situation where you wish you watched more TV because I have no idea what commercials are being mm-hmm. put out there <laughs> right now. Uh, right. Uh, so how about your number ten? What about your number nine? I said mine. Oh, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I did. It was Inside Out. Oh, yeah. right, and you're, uh, you're, yeah. Right, Judd, number ten. Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. Interesting. Yes. Me too. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I think that it's a risk. Like I was like, once again, this could have been one of my dark horses, but it could be the next, uh, what's it called? Nice of the Caribbean or nice of the Caribbean Pirates of the Caribbean, or it could be a flop, but George Clooney is in it. We got Hugh Laurie. I don't know. I, th- I, it, I don't know. I think it has the appeal and they're going to market it. It's Disney. So they're going to make sure it gets properly marketed. And it's coming out in early May. Yeah. That's I chose Tomorrowland as my number ten as well. I'll probably wind up regretting it, but it's I'm not particularly interested in it whatsoever. But it's it's released early. It's Disney. It's well promoted. George Clooney. Yeah, yeah. I probably would have put Tomorrowland at my number ten if I had thought about it more. But uh, <clears throat> instead, I have Terminator. Okay. Because I think Terminator is going to be up there. Mm-hmm. God, I hope so. Yeah. I hope it's I hope it's good enough to be up there too. I hope it's about the eighth best. 
to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just be specific. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope it's worth it. Yeah. All right. Well, that takes care of our top 10 list. Now we got to our dark horses. Let's talk about dark horses. You just want me to name, like, I'll just name my three? Yeah, just name your three. All right. I got Mad Max number three, or the one worth three, if that makes number sense. Number one, sure. Yeah, number one. Uh, it was either going to be like between nine and that, like it was, and uh, but it's the R scared me away. Yeah. Um, it's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but if it got as high as even three or four, I wouldn't be surprised to be honest. But it mm-hmm. just had it had the biggest range of possibilities. Yeah. Highest risk. Yeah. And then uh, number two, I have Spy with what's her name? Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, M- Melissa McCarthy. Uh. I, she always makes money, and this mm-hmm. is, has uh, Jude Law and Jason Statham in it as well. So yeah, I think it could be good. And then the, my Magic Mike is my one, my lowest one. Okay, fair enough. I don't have Spy anywhere on my list. Uh, I just don't have much faith in that. Movie. I just put Spy in, but the the pers- hot pursuit one that Alex. Like if I yeah. had thought about it, I might have switched oh. Spy and that you one. were also on the edge between those two. Yeah. Okay. Like I didn't even think of it, but like now thinking about Spy would have replaced that one maybe. Okay. Um Alex Dark Horse list. All right. I wasn't prepared to put them in order. So now I feel pressure. Oh, but, well, I can come back to you. Uh I'll, here we go. I'll okay. just I'll send them off. I almost want to amend mine now to include Mad Max. The top of my Dark Horse list is Magic Mike okay. XXL. For all the reasons we've discussed already, mm-hmm. uh, there will be no Tate unchanned yeah. by the end of that movie. Or otherwise, they'll just okay. they'll yeah. chan the rest of the Tates in the third one. Yeah. So we'll figure it out. My second is Trainwreck. It comes out later in the year. It's an R-rated filthy comedy. It looks like it has the potential to be the next Hangover. Mm-hmm. Except it has... A, I, I didn't read anything about it, but... It, it carries almost the Judd Apatow vibe, like This is 40. I don't know if you watched that. Yeah. It it seems to be, well, Trainwreck is the name of it. It's got a really hot right now comedic cast, and it's got an R rating, which scared me from putting it in the top 10, or it would have taken the Hot Pursuit place. What, uh, I actually don't know this one. Which Who's all in it? <laughs> if you can name one. I have already forgotten. Oh, okay, but great. while I was researching this, yeah. it was very it's compelling as a dark right horse. Now. Yeah. You already yeah. told me. My I was mistake. like, oh, <laughs> I know those. I think maybe Kristen Wiig, <laughs> Bill yeah. Hader. Oh, those. But they, oh, don't, yeah. don't quote me on that. Oh, no, I understand. Just, yeah, yeah. That, that caliber of comedy names. You're looking at big comedy yeah. names and R rating, filthy, awful. Gotcha. So it's it's got potential. And the last one I chose, uh, now I can't read it. I chose awful fonts for this. Uh, Regression is a drama. It's coming out in August. It stars Ethan Hawke and Emma Watson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are a few big hmm. reasons. Tagline for it was that a father is accused of a crime he has no memory of committing. Uh, the one screenshot IMDb showed was Ethan Hawke looking regretful and Emma Watson looking morose. Yeah. There's also a really sad reason, and I guess people will find this from the internet. It is rumored that Emma Watson will take off her clothes in this movie. Which uh, I, that for all the sickos who want to see mm-hmm. the child Hermione, Hermione Granger yeah. take her clothes off, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, there it is. Um, but it also it looks to me like you know every now and again, actually it seems like pretty much every year a drama does break its way into the top ten, and mm-hmm. this looks like a heavy drama with Emma Watson. However, going against it, it is going to be released in August, and I've heard nothing of it until I started researching for this. What's it called? Regression. Regression. Yeah. Bill, you need more time to yeah. get that on Fandango before we start. And then, theory? like, my midnight <laughs> horse would be Mad Max. Yeah. But, like, but I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't get that. My three dark horses to recap Mad Mike, XXL, Train Wreck, and Regression. Nice. Okay. So your last two are kind of out there. Yes, they All are. Right. Those yeah. see, those, those are ones, real dark, dark yeah, horses. Yeah. Those, it was really <laughs> like, I saw them and I was like, you know, I feel like I will want to talk about these, so yeah. I'm going to put them in there because they look appealing to me. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the list, I couldn't apply what's appealing to me really that well. Yeah. All right. Well, for my Dark Horses, at number one, I have Tomorrowland. Okay. Which I think, uh, I honestly think that movie's not going to do very well. Mm-hmm. However, it could hit number, It could hit top ten, so we'll see. For number two... Uh, <laughs> This is way down from where from your guys' list, but I have Fantastic Four. I 
Uh, and I understand I'm supposed to be evaluating this based on consumer trends and all that. Right. I just, <laughs> I don't like Fantastic Four. Yeah. Have you seen a trailer for this one? Mm, I saw a part of it. It looks like hard sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Well, it's guaranteed I, three points for you, I, I would guess. Or two points. Oh, yeah, that is your second one. Yeah. Wow. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I think it's going to flop, relatively speaking. Right. And the third one, I think, is possibly a um, not so much a sleeper, but I think it ha- it's going to have enough of momentum behind it. Is uh, Pitch Perfect two? Yeah, that it was, was that yeah. was one of my contenders. Yeah. Yep, I was I had that. I actually want that to do it's, well because yeah. uh, I'm a fan of the girl. What's her name? Anna have you Kendrick? seen the first one? Anna Kendrick. No, I haven't. Oh, it's really good. I watched it in theaters. I was like so yeah. happy, like because I was there's another one of those date movies where you're like regretting going to the theater and then when you get there you're like Yay, yeah this is okay i can do this i i have heard it was really really funny yeah it's kind of it, it, yeah. that seems i'll put that on my list i guess yeah pitch oh. perfect too though no i'm not on anybody else's list no now, i i had it, a, it is on my contenders list oh so i that's what i needed yeah <laughs> contenders list <laughs> right it, it was, this was entirely too difficult to process yeah but if i'll you, do it again if you are listening at home you can play along <clears throat> by emailing us or by leaving a YouTube comment, if you're listening to this on YouTube, our email address is mostlyfailgames at gmail.com. And that's right, I said games, even though we've only had TV and <laughs> movie information on this podcast. We'll get there. Uh, the rules are, movie has to come out during the summer, which is defined as between May 1st and September 7th. We will count domestic box office returns... So only tickets sold in the United States. Uh, actually, North America. I, I think North America is what. Yeah. No, uh, so United States, Canada, you know, whatever. Right. Um, Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Antarctica. All that stuff. Um, all right. So you're gonna pick the top ten in order. Scoring is not important. Pick three dark horses, which you think will possibly appear in the top in the top ten. And uh, if you win, we. Uh, oh. Say your name out loud yeah. or something. Uh, I mean, the thing I talked about previously, would you be okay with doing that? Yeah, you can do we'll it if you want. Figure that out down if the you've line. made it all the way to the end of this discussion, yeah, then here you go. Uh, so if you win, uh, you will receive $20 gift certificate to GameStop, which is why we use the games uh, what, yeah. Uh, yeah. email. There you Mostly go. Mostly fail games we, at gmail.com. <laughs> we just linked it in. Yeah. So you get $20 at GameStop. Our movie contest yeah. will pay out in games. Yes. <laughs> so. And if you enter, you'll probably be the only one yeah. who does. Yeah. Congratulations. So congratulations ahead of time. Especially if you're from New Hampshire. Just saying that. Yeah. <laughs> we need one view from New Hampshire to get to 50 states. Yeah. So we'll update this at some point during the summer, I think. Maybe even at the end of each month. There you go. That sounded right. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. The end of May, month. the end of June, July. and we'll cover whoever's. We'll also, races. talk about whoever is leading the competition. Yeah. Well, it's going to be hard to say. Yeah. But we'll we'll yeah we'll discuss it, right. and uh, yeah.